right, it is uh, New Year's Day 2022 and I'm uh, at the Oldermeyer again near uh, Difflen and Hardenberg. Uh, I've been here last summer also and I said I wanted to return to this place in the winter. I found yet another new place, a bit of the forest that I haven't explored yet. And this is also the first time that I'm actually taking a look at that part. And this bit is also going straight to the N36 motorway. Um, there should also be like a crossing with the motorway. But uh, yeah, you'd be a fool to do that. Because as a pedestrian it's extremely dangerous to cross the road. Even though there actually is like a path there and a crossing to the other side of the forest that you cannot easily access. Uh, I am not going to do that, but I am going to show you where that crossing is, if I can find it. New bit of the forest here. It's quite different than the other bit. And well, it's now January 2022. The 1st of January to be precise. And let's check out this forest. Hmm, there's some logs there that they've cut down. So they are chopping down a lot of trees, probably from that area, by the looks of it. And here's the chopped down trees. It smells nice. It has the typical uh, pine smell that I like so much. Yeah, this is also a production forest because it is uh, owned by uh, Staatsbosbeheer. That's probably why many of the roads are just kind of straight. Because they, uh, well, yeah, they use this to actually produce wood. I wonder how old those trees really are. Well, if you feel so inclined you can count the rings. But you'd spend ages counting them all. I must say that the thickness of the uh, logs kind of differs. Some are quite thick, others are fairly small. And I think that most of it is just pine trees and I think they want to like change up the uh, tree mixture a bit because there's a lot of pine but then there's also those other trees and they probably want more of those and less of those. I think. I don't know but uh, yeah I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they want to do. So yeah, I could follow this path, but I'm just going straight ahead here. This kind of goes to the motorway. And I think we should walk this path all the way to the end. Because at that point you need to make a left hand turn. And then you come to a bit that gets very close to a gate. And it's where you can cross the motorway. Which, uh, yeah, I don't think you should do that as a pedestrian, because it's a road where they uh, drive 100 kilometers an hour and motorists do not expect people crossing the road. I feel they really should build a tunnel there. Yeah, just by the looks of it, you wouldn't think that this is January, that it is winter, but it really is. Just like uh, a few days after Christmas, or actually two days after Christmas, I was visiting the uh, Hellendoorn area, which you couldn't see in a previous video. At that time it was also kind of warm. It was a little bit colder than today, but now it's like 13 to 14 degrees. It is just extremely warm for January. It is not a temperature that you would expect now. I mean, uh, yeah, normally it should really be freezing cold, but this is, well, way above uh, way above freezing. It's warmer than 10 degrees. Yeah, it's kind of messed up. 
Also, I have been uh, experimenting with my uh, Volca FM. I have now made a spreadsheet with all the factory patches that I have transferred by hand. And I've also uh, tried the uh, audio recording method by uh, just capturing the audio uh, when you do a uh, patch export. And well, I was able to successfully play those uh, files back to actually import uh, patches again into the machine. To actually import patches back into the Volca. So I was able to uh, play back the uh, audio uh, using WaveLab and the Volca imports the uh, data if the volume levels are set correctly, but they have to be quite loud. I think this road is probably going in parallel with the N36, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe I should have gone left. I don't know. Mm, let's continue on for a bit here. And let's actually walk here because that's very muddy. Here's more chop down trees. Yeah, the Volca FM is just pretty interesting because I want to recreate those uh, factory patches with uh, PatchBase or with Dexet. PatchBase is an iPad app um, for uploading and managing and storing SysX patches for the DX7 and many other synths, and it also supports the Volca. So yeah, I want to reprogram those patches myself, so I painstakingly uh, copied all the values of all the parameters of all the patches into a spreadsheet and that, that was a lot of work but it makes you appreciate the uh, numeric keypad on a computer because it allows you to very efficiently uh, enter values into a spreadsheet especially if all the parameters are in the correct sequence that the uh, Volca uses I was able to do it fairly quickly, all 32 factory patches. But of course I still need to recreate them uh, with Dexet or PatchBase or with Centmata, which is an uh, online um, patch editor that works in a browser. Um, but yeah, sadly that thing actually has a bug uh, in it, which means that some of the values are not uh, represented correctly. I am already seeing the N36 motorway over there. And I'm also hearing it. We're getting pretty close. And there's more trees that have chopped down here. Still no signs of raven birds. I really want to see them at one point. I mean, it's now start of January, so they should be mating. And when they're mating, they're getting noisy. Oh yeah, there's a cyclist. There's also that cycling path that I've shown in a previous video. Yeah, you really need like a ATB bike here if you're a cyclist. Because with a uh, well regular city bike, it's no good. You need an ATB for this type of terrain. Oh, it's muddy as well. Hmm, let's see. Hey, there's actually a trench with water. Let's just kind of get around the mud. Two years ago they were also uh, kind of cutting down trees, I remember. Yeah, this is the cycling path. That one actually has asphalt. So this is suitable for like normal cyclists with a city bike and 
not necessarily an ATB. But yeah, this is really uh, ATB worthy terrain. So we're getting close to the road. I mean, I can pretty much hear the road and you probably can too because it's uh, very noisy and busy. So, and I think that in a few moments we need to go left because you can't go any further there. But if you want to go to that place where you can cross the road, you have to go left and then you can go ahead a little bit and then you enter a fence. Hmm, this is an ATB trail. But why is that marked off? Maybe because of that tree that's fallen down. Yeah. I guess it's a good idea that they've marked this off so that you're not just uh, tripping over it with your ATB. Because that will be kind of nasty if you're just speeding along here and then you'll trip over this fallen tree. That's not good. Oh dang, this is getting very muddy. Oh, it looks like there's an ATB trail going straight ahead there. Yeah, I discovered, um, after just uh, googling uh, information about uh, Yamaha DX7 patches, that there is this uh, Sint Mata patch editor for the Volca VM, which is just a browser-based thing. And uh, yeah, I think it's really nice. It looks uh, easier to use than Dexet. Dexet has quite a complicated user interface. Uh, not very user friendly. Also I had a look at Dexet's uh, source code because it's open source and it is uh, poorly documented. Uh, there's almost no documentation and almost no comments in the source code either because I wanted to look something up about uh, certain parameters and I thought oh maybe they put some lookup table in the source code but no, they did something really weird. Uh, but yeah, that's something for a different video. But uh, Sint Mata looks quite nice, although yeah, it sadly has a bug that uh, the value range of some of the parameters is incorrect. And that causes the sound of a patch to sound different than it should. There's the motorway, and there's a blue sign with an arrow and it means that people are not allowed to actually make a left hand or right hand turn. It requires them to go straight ahead. But yeah you can actually cross the road there. Yeah just look at how busy it is. It's just kind of dangerous and sadly that other part of the forest is not as accessible as this one. There's no car park uh, and no road, as far as I'm aware, that you can easily access. There's only like a dirt road and yeah, no car park at all. Not that I know of and I can't seem to find that on uh, Google Maps. It seems like that bit is just kind of inaccessible. Unless you want to, well, ride on a dirt road like this. Which with a car is not really fun. So even more trees. Some of these are a lot thicker. This one smells nice too. Ooh, this has that sticky tree resin. You better not touch it because it's very sticky. Especially here. Resin always smells nice. In fact, there's even bathing shampoo from a brand called Badadas that has like a green color uh, and that smells like pine trees. 
Yeah, I did use that uh, like 25 years ago. Uh, yeah, it was quite nice stuff. Hmm, interesting how this pattern is here. And that's resin, so very sticky. And then there's a very small branch, and this bit is completely cracked. Yeah, this is like the core wood, and this is like the kind of lesser stuff. It's when it comes to like wood quality, you want to have the piece from the center, and the outer parts that are younger are not as good and not as tough. I don't know the English terms for it, but in Dutch, uh, the core is called kernhout. And then the outer part is called, uh, I think it was uh, spint out. And it's just a lesser density because it's younger and not as tough. So the core wood is much better. Hey, this has a very interesting color. Especially if you consider this. Mm, and this is probably a place where a branch attached, because you can kind of see it here, and then this bit here. And these are basically defects. So if you have a plank, a wooden beam, these sort of things, they kind of cause weaknesses and defects in the wood. And this is also where a branch attached. And that's why glue laminated timber is so great. Because it means you get a wooden beam without any defects, because it's laminated from different pieces. Pieces that are all good and defect free. Well, there was two cyclists who apparently did cross the road. And I see another person there, a few, in fact a few more, that are trying their luck. Well, yeah, I'm not going to attempt it as a pedestrian. Because you see they have to wait a very long time to cross it until it gets kind of quiet. So here's a gate with a little fence. And there's the other end of the forest. And here's a busy motorway with speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing this, because look at this, crossing an unguarded railroad crossing is a lot safer. And there's not a car there, and they're all going fast, like 100 kilometers an hour. So yeah, crossing this road, bad idea, even though some cyclists uh, do it. I guess you could cross it now, if you really wanted to. Yeah, this is uh, just kind of dangerous. You could cross it, but yeah, I'm not going to do it, because there's a few more cars that are just kind of fast. I think they should build like a bridge here with, or even better, a tunnel, to make it more accessible. Because it's just kind of insane, crossing this road as a pedestrian, it's not a good idea. Yeah, it, I think that's just madness. It also tells you, you, can, you may only go straight ahead. And there's a yield sign. Only go straight ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm not going to cross that road, too dangerous. I mean, I think that is just insane. They should either just make like a pedestrian footbridge there with stairs. But a bridge like that would need to be at least 7 meters high uh, for trucks to pass underneath it. Because uh, if it has a clearance of 7 meters, the, a bridge doesn't have to be reinforced. If it's lower, uh, it needs extra reinforcement against bridge strikes with uh, trucks. So yeah, footbridge, it would need stairs on either side, 
and it would have to be seven meters high and it would be kind of disruptive in the landscape so a tunnel would be a lot better but also more expensive but at least a tunnel means it's accessible to pedestrians and cyclists it would just be a, a much better and safer solution although yeah it is expensive to build You know, a cyclist can cross that road a lot quicker than a pedestrian. So that's why I only saw a few cyclists there. Uh, because they can, can get up to speed when they cross the road. They have just more of an overview, I guess. As a pedestrian you would really have to make a run for it. And only cross when it's really quiet. And you see how busy that road is. It's not a good idea to cross it. And sadly, that is the only crossing and the only way to get on that other side. Because, as far as I'm aware, according to Google Maps, there's no car park on the other side of the forest. So, being able to explore that uh, is not easy. Unless someone could inform me of a possible car park there. But by the looks of it, just by looking on Google Maps there doesn't appear to be any. And also when it comes to just access roads to that other side of the forest, it's all just small rural roads, mostly dirt roads. So yeah, it's just not ideal. It's really only kind of accessible to cyclists because I've discovered that there actually is some sort of tunnel under the road but it's a few well, at least two kilometers away from here, I think. Yeah, it's just too far walking for a pedestrian. I mean, crossing an unguarded railroad crossing is a lot safer. Because in the Netherlands they want to get rid of uh, unguarded railroad crossings. Those are uh, railroad crossings that don't have any uh, warning lights and any signals. It's just, well, an Andreas cross informing you that there's a railroad crossing and that's it. Those are infinitely safer to cross than this road. <laughs> because a train, well, may come once every 15 minutes or so. But this is just ongoing traffic. There's no way you can safely cross that. And even with those unguarded railroad crossings, there are many accidents. And that's why they uh, want to get rid of them and why most of them have already been uh, abandoned and just uh, removed. There's only just a few left actually. In the uh, Munel Sepulty Hof van Twente there are still a few that exist, but that's a single track railroad. Uh, yeah, most of them have already disappeared. But uh, 20 years ago, there was still a lot of unguarded railroad crossings. But at least those you can kind of safely cross as a pedestrian, but not really as a motorist. They are especially dangerous for motorists. Especially if they are slow vehicles like uh, tractors and agricultural uh, vehicles who are slow and heavy, uh, they seem to be mostly involved with accidents with unguarded railroad crossings. But yeah, just like last time, you can really hear road noise. And last time, I was in a completely different side of the forest, and that was in fact alongside a different road called the uh, N34. I wonder if I can go left here. Yeah, it seems I have to follow the cycling path. Oh, that means I'm also kind of straight off quite a bit. Yeah, somewhere behind there in the distance is like a road with a little tunnel. Yeah, it's just way too far walking.
I don't know exactly where it is, probably somewhere behind that farmhouse. I think it should be possible to go left here. If I go straight ahead, I actually end up at the main road, at the Oldermeyerweg. But uh, since I actually came from about there, I better go left. It looks like there may be two roads. Here's a road. And there's something up there, but I don't know what that is. I think that's that water trench. Hmm, if I follow that, we surely get back. Hey, yeah, that should be possible. I think there's a path alongside it. Although it looks very muddy. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that is such a good idea to be fair. Doesn't really look like a proper path to me. So there you have it, it was another look at the Oldermeyer. Now we're in another part of the forest, close to a very dangerous road crossing. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye bye.